guys, welcome back. This is Anthony. This is Isaac. We're here with uh, Mr. Jason Campbell. He's going to kind of shed some light on his amazing transformation. Uh, Mr. Jason Campbell is going to kind of shed some light on his amazing transformation. We've dropped 80 pounds of fat. We've gained, I say, 40 pounds of muscle in this 10-month period, almost 11 months now. How do you feel? I feel wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> As you should. Much better now than then. You've lost a uh, small human off of your body. Indeed. Indeed. That's yeah. crazy. Definitely. So... If, if you ever wonder what that would look like, if you pit two 40-pound bags of dog food, we've peeled that off of Ooh. this person. And then added 40 pounds of yeah. structure. Yeah. Stuff that holds itself up. That's crazy. Yeah, it's amazing. Because that's really what it came out to. 40 it's pounds worth of dog food, you can see that disappear from your body. It's pretty amazing. Yep. And it's literally like a sack of dog food. Because <laughs> <laughs> the density is about the same, which is... Oh, I mean, that's... Man. You put it that way. It's 120 bad. point turnaround. That's nuts. That's nuts. Pretty so, epic stuff. So when you first walked in the lifetime, what were your thoughts as far as like your goal and everything else? So I knew I was going to have to simplify uh, the thought process because if I looked at the end result, I knew I would not make it. So you can't walk in, you know, almost a 300 pounder with 49% body fat and think, okay, I'm going to have a six pack and I'm going to put on all this muscle because you won't see the results fast enough and you'll get discouraged very quickly. So I, I was smart enough to know how excuses work. So instead, my fitness goals, uh, when I did my interview, what are your fitness goals? I said, no, I've only got two goals, and, and those are the only two goals I'm going to think about. Goal number one, show up. I'm just going to show up to the gym. That's goal number one. Goal number two, I'll do the best I can when I get here. So if that only means I can do two reps, fine. I'll do those two reps, and I'll try and do three next time. But those are, the, in my mind, the only two things that I could control. I can't control anything else. So, you know, having these elaborate fitness goals, and I want to lose 100 pounds, and I want to put on, you know, 50 pounds of muscle, and I want to look like, you know, I want to look like the rock, you know. None of that stuff is going to be realistic because you can't stick with it thinking that way so having a simple goal was the big deal for me just show up do the best you can when you're here and I don't want to do any thinking so I kind of had a mild third goal I don't want to think about anything I'm just gonna let I'm gonna do what I'm told he does hate thinking. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> even when he asks questions you watch like the the glass come over his yeah eyes. it goes in one ear and out the other it's like ah you do the thinking I don't I, I'll just pick I stuff up and put it down again. yeah, yeah. Well, no, you ask him a question, and he goes to the answer, and all of a sudden, like, he realizes, like, it's not why I'm here. And just the yeah, I don't really need to right. know. Yeah. <laughs> it sounded like a good thing to do to ask a question. Sounds like you know what you're doing. But, man, to simplify it to the point of just show up, and then the second thing, do the, you're absolutely right. Those are the only two things as a client that you can control. I can't control anything else. The design, the, yeah. what the plan is is going to be based off, of, like you said, do what you're told. You That's it. Three simple That's things. it. I'll yeah. just do what I'm told, and I don't have to think about anything. I just got to focus on two simple goals, which, you know, is very easy to attain on a daily basis. It's a daily decision. And, Tony, to ask you, because I'm pretty <clears> trained to uh, you and Katie, uh, what, when you, he told you this, what did you think? Cause well, my first, I literally, my first thought was, we'll see. Okay, because I mean, uh, it's not the first time we've heard Tony. it. <laughs> but it's not the first kidding. time we've heard it. It's it's definitely it's been said before. It literally took about a week of of watching him to realize that that's what it was going to be. Because after the first session, everyone's gum ho. Everyone's oh, got that. Right. Yeah. I'm going to do this. this oh, I lost life. my motivation on day two. The it was gone. Was turned on. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it yeah. was gone. Then <laughs> there was no motivation. Yeah, and that's the thing I absolutely love because, like, every <clears> after time... session one or uh, day one of day one. <laughs> the next after day I was walking home <laughs> to or walking to the car, I said, "Screw this, man. This is yeah." <laughs> <laughs> Immediately, yeah. no more motivation. <laughs> oh, 
<laughs> when you're in pain, you have no motivation. Yeah. Like, it sucks. Everything hurts. I want to die. I think yeah. you have that t-shirt, right? And I was absolutely <laughs> in such horrible physical condition that that first training session was just terrible. It was not a good experience at all. So was it at that point or before <clears throat> that you realized how bad off you were? Like in that first session, it was like one of those things. That was the eye opener of how bad I really was. And then, of course, when we did the uh, the testing, that was another giant eye opener. Okay. Yeah, because our first test, you had a VO2 of 27.4. So Which is off the charts bad. You don't even have that on the chart. It's below the poorest of the poor at 30 VO2. points. Yeah. I'm at 27. So, you know, being explained, if I just had a mild survivable totally random heart attack that would anybody would live I would die yeah it's like okay well that's a bit of an eye-opener mm -hmm. and being as fat as I was and as out of shape as I was that was a real possibility of happening so that was kind of a little bit of a scare <laughs> so in that moment when they told you that did you think you'd be where you are now 80 pounds down 30 pounds of muscle up Again, I was focused on goal number one and goal number two. That's it. I, I never let my brain get past that. You know, yeah, we all have this mental image of what we would like to look like, but, you know, it's a long, it's a marathon. So. And, and how long was that the focus? Those three simple, was it a month? It's Is still it, the focus. It's still the focus. E even now. Wow. It's still the focus. Goal number one and goal number two. That's it. Because those are the things you can control. Because yeah. honestly, after almost a year, uh, you're going to get mentally tired at this point. You're just tired. You've been working out six days a week. You've been following this uh, comical, ridiculous diet, intermittent fasting now. So you're, you're just tired and, and oh, I don't feel like it. I don't feel like it. The excuses start coming out. And you, you just look in the mirror and say, I've got two goals. Just number one, show up. Number two, do the best you can. That's it. Just focus on those two goals. That's all. Simple. Keep it simple, stupid. Kiss. I have never heard those <laughs> as the goals. I, I've always got, I want to lose X amount of weight. I want to look like yeah. The Rock Johnson. And that's why most people don't make it. It's exactly because it's not real. Yeah. The you're just not, it's not a realistic, you're, there's not very many people that can see that through to the end. You know, one of the things that I teach people in business, because I'm a broker and I teach people how to be realtors, what's the easiest mile on a 26 mile marathon? If you ask a marathon runner, they won't tell you it's the first mile. They'll tell you it's the last mile. And then, of course, you'll ask, well, why? Because I can see the end. And each step, even though it's painful, I can see it getting closer. So, you know, a marathon runner will tell you that last mile is usually the fastest mile, which doesn't make sense because, well, wait a minute, the other 25 miles would have wore you the ever-living hell out, right? But every marathon runner will tell you the same thing. Oh, no, that last mile you just cruise. It's the easiest. Oh, you can see the end. It's almost over. Sweet. You run a little faster. You're a little more excited. You have a little bit more energy. You hear the, yeah, you hear the yeah. people. Yeah. There's a lot of Yeah, it's into. that last mile. So the first 25 just suck ass. And, you know, it's like, okay, well, I just got to make it to that last mile. All we got to do is make it. So the process for me was, you know, simplifying it, but also, you know, the goal setting process. This is my goal. I want to get healthy. And then you got to go in and say, oh, let me find out what I don't know. So that's where you start coming in and say, okay, well, let me take all these tests. Let me find out what I don't know. Yeah. So that's when you learn about things like food sensitivity tests, which I had never even heard of ever even existed in the first place. I didn't know there was such a thing. Hmm. So let me go find out all the stuff that I'm eating that's literally killing me, and I would never know because I'm not allergic to it. There's no physical reaction to it, but it's killing me. Inside and, out. Yeah, and there's no way for you to know that if you don't take the test, right? And then, you know, finding out my VO2 was below the charts, and then the resting, you know, saying, wow, your metabolism's so jacked up, you're just burning nothing. Is this oh, great. Sugar? I'm yeah. assuming it was bad. But you don't know that if you don't find out what you don't Absolutely. know. So now I know what I don't know, and then my plan was I don't want to think, so I'll leave this to the professionals. I'm going to hire trainers. I'm going to just, okay, you set the schedule, and I come in here and just pick things up and put them down. I pull did. stuff, and push stuff, you know, <laughs> run here and eat this, don't eat that. Okay. You, you definitely made Tony uh, pull a dive into the toolbox and pull out movements he hasn't used. Oh, my God. He's a sick, to, twisted to keep bastard. keep you engaged and different, right? Like, But that goes back to, like, the first question you asked. Like, how many clients have I had that I can't use some of this stuff with because oh, they haven't stayed consistent absolutely. long enough where you could 
yeah. do some of the stuff. It, their core is not strong enough. It never gets to that point. Well, now right? I wonder when he tells me to do a normal exercise, I look at him funny like, what? You just yeah. want me to do a regular bench this, press? This, this. <laughs> no tempo, no bunchy cords, no weird no. shit. Uh, <laughs> what? Oh, man. Uh, <laughs> you got to get some chains, Tony. Yeah. Oh, God. I wish I could. Tony would love this. Yeah. But you're <laughs> just that. That's it? Yes. <laughs> No. Just a regular squat? Are you sure? And you can see it too, because he'll do the set and then he'll put it up and be kind of like, Yeah, when, uh, where's the hammer dropping yeah. here? This is not, yeah. we don't do normal things. You're going to kick me in the head while I do that? Yeah, you, yeah, you pulling out the Fuji bamboo yeah. stick? Is that coming? And you mentioned the schedule. What type of schedule were you, or, were you on? How often were you working out or homework was given to you? And, and I, I had to be honest with myself. And that is, I am not a morning person, so therefore setting up morning sessions is a recipe for failure for me. So I was like, no, I'm not going to do that. So I set it up for 11 o'clock a.m. Six days a week is my workout schedule, five of which I'm with a trainer, and one day I just do cardio. Okay. But I just do what I'm told. And the beginning meal plan phases were... I jumped right in from day one said, you know, once the food sensitivity test came in, it's like, here's a list of shit you don't eat. Eat anything else you want, just nothing on this list. Okay. No. And then so, his, his, his uh, instructions to me were, pile as much of it in as you can. Because yeah, I wasn't yeah. eating enough. I was exactly. one of those people that was eating one meal a day, and it's like, oh, you're not eating enough. Yeah. Tony, do you remember the metabolism? Of what was that? <clears throat> Off the top of my head, I want to say it was like 1,800. He okay. wasn't even there. He was eating maybe yeah. a thousand. <clears throat> maybe a thousand. Yeah. So, you know, and he mentioned in the beginning the intermittent fasting and you know, one meal a day and he wasn't getting there. He was getting one meal a day that was maybe 700 calories. So if you look at the meals he's getting now, if he eats two meals a day, he's getting in, I think, 2,800 calories in those two meals. They're plus 1,400 shade, calorie plus, meals, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so I'm eating more than I've ever eaten. And they were actually bitching at me that I had to pile it in. And yeah. it's like, well, where am I supposed to put it? Oh. You know, my yeah. stomach can only hold so much, man. I remember talking to you one day, and I said, how's it going? And you just said, I don't know how I'm going to fit all this freaking food in. <laughs> exactly. And you know, you know that flies against conventional wisdom of yes. you need to eat less. And it's like, more. you mean to tell me I need to eat twice as much as I'm eating now to lose weight? That doesn't make sense to me. But again, I'm not doing any of the thinking, so I'm just going to do what I'm told. Mm -hmm. And I did just that. I'm yes. not going to think about you anything. Just do it. Yeah. What, what type of adjustments did you have to make, Tony, or in together? Because obviously he wasn't hitting the, the amount right from the beginning, so what were some things? Or Sometimes it was just shakes, getting more shakes in there, but a lot of shakes, it came down true. to... You gotta eat because gotta his biggest thing was, and it's psychological for everybody. Whether it's the forefront or the back of your mind, I have to get food in. But he just said it; it's counterintuitive. So you're looking at somebody who's overweight, deconditioned, and saying eat more. That to me, it's it. I actually I, I do. I feel bad when I tell people that because what they think when I say that is kind of it's the opposite. How did you when I, when I first said that to you? Like, how did that feel? Like, yeah, I was like, you, what? <laughs> what are you talking are you about? Sure? I, I thought I need to. I, need, I thought I needed to get less calories, not yeah. more. <laughs> but no, I, I tell the story a lot about um, <laughs> one of our clients who uh, who came in and she had tried everything else, and I told her the same thing, and she's like, that's that's fine, I believe you, but if it doesn't work for me, you're fired. So I always go into any assessment with that because. I've heard it before, and I understand it, and I understand how ludicrous it sounds, and we've said it before, and I'm, I'm sure you've had a hundred or more people tell you that you're nuts. Oh, but yeah. It's, or get looked at like I'm crazy. And yeah. I just had to ease into it. You know, let me eat this meal, and then I'll try and force a few extra bites, and it was just like working out. I can only do two reps. I'll try and do three next time. Well, I can only eat this much now. Let me try and eat a little bit more next time, and just, you know, slowly got it up to where it needed to be. And, now I'm like a yeah. ravenous dog. And that goes to go number <laughs> <laughs> And that goes back to go number two, do the best you can, even with the, the meal plan. Yeah, even yeah, with the meal plan. Can, a little extra spoon here and there. But there was a little commitment. I, I, you know, if it was on the list, I didn't eat it. No. If yeah. it came up on the food sensitivity, it just eliminated it from the diet. And, and Those that, were all one and twos and threes? Yeah, yeah, I just eliminated all of them. I said, if I'm going to do it, let's just go to the extreme. No. Make it easy. Don't, yeah, don't, if it's yeah, on the list, don't just don't don't eat it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So no special diet, you know. No, oh, are you on the keto diet? No, just don't eat stuff the that came up on the list. That you uh, have gone is intermittent fasting. Yeah, yeah. that's the most. Special and that that's been very interesting. How, Sixteen I, hours I of not ask eating. You, how do you like it? 
how do you... Uh, you get used to it. I think the first week was a little difficult. Because I've been doing it since first grade, not on purpose, and then on purpose the last five, four or yeah. five years, but um, you get used to it, yeah. You get used to it. Is he is 16, 8? So yeah, so I, 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 only, I start... I have a shake at 10 o'clock, and then I eat again at 1, and I got a, my eating window is 1 to 5. So at 5 p.m., I'm done. No more. And no more until the, the next you day. You have to get X amount of calories. Yeah, so you got to pile it in, and those, that little time you got. 2,800 in a short amount of time. So two shakes, two meals is the goal. Okay. Yeah. And plus with what he's doing, he's still moving around in the afternoon. So he's done eating at 5, but he's still showing houses. Maybe still showing houses five. and working. So you're not... It's not done eating at five. It's hard at night out. when I get home and the TV comes on. You turn your brain off. And Habits. Yeah. Other people in the house are munching down and oh, you're smelling it. And it's like, it's oh, it's damn it. Yeah. Can't eat, can't eat, can't eat. Yeah. You know. <laughs> then you have Anthony in your head going, well, that's how you eat your fat. Your body's eating your fat, so just suck it, suck it up. Yeah. Yeah. There's been a couple of times I actually texted him at night. Yeah. I'm abnormally hungry. He's like, too bad. That's not my problem. <laughs> but, it, it, but that in and of itself is the biggest swing because it went from I can't get it in to I'm starving. Like, what do I do? It's like, I, well, you know what? And this was something we had a conversation with at the very beginning. You're going to miss these workouts. You're going to miss these things because once they're gone, they're gone. And you're going to be like, well, that used to be so hard. And now I'm doing this crap. Like, what the hell is going on? Like, when, why can't we go back to that to Easy that? Yeah. Now. Yeah. No, he was honest from day one. It'll never get easier. No. no matter how good a shape you get, we're always pushing the envelope, so it's always going to be this level of suckness. Absolutely. Oh, great. Yeah. That's, so this, this isn't something we've talked about yet, but when you look at that exact concept, do you think that in and of itself is a deterrent for people? Do you think, they, do you think people think they're going to get better, and because they don't get better, they stop? Yes. I think we live in a society now where it's instant gratification. Which is your biggest enemy? You have to realize it's a, it's not a sprint. It's going to be a marathon. It it took you a long time to get as out of shape as you are. And it's not going to reverse itself in one month. It's just not going to happen. It's not physically possible. So it's, you know, I'd like to say I was motivated, but I have no damn motivation. That That was gone a long time ago. It's a daily decision. You wake up in the morning and say, my goals are to show up and do the best I can. So let's execute that. Because I can't tell you how many days I wake up and I don't want to come. It's the last place I want to be. And I'll be honest. I'll just tell it like it is. I don't feel like it today. I'm tired. I feel sick. I, you know, I didn't get my meals in. I feel lethargic. At this point, you're how many months into the... Almost a year. Almost, Almost a year. I think we're in month 11 now. Okay. And so it's like, you know, I, I'm tired. I'm mentally tired. It's been a long road. Maybe I can just take a day off. Yeah. And then it's like... If you give yourself that one day off, it becomes easier to make that excuse again. So it's like, no, can't do it. So no days off. You look at the mirror and you say, suck it up, buttercup, because sitting on the couch ain't going to get you where you want to go. And excuses never got anybody anything. So, too bad. Yeah. Goal number one, show up. So get off your ass and go show up. Because it turns out if you don't actually go to the gym, it doesn't work. Yeah. Yeah, and it looks like, according to this, I sent out your first meal plan on December, uh, no, October 31st. Oh, wow. Halloween. I, I modified that because I think there was a modification. No, so that definitely went out before. You guys yeah. definitely joined before, so you're definitely... Yeah, we out. talked about it before it went out in writing. Yeah, because I'm just looking at the save file date. I know if I were to look at the actual system, we'd find what's really in there. But a lot of things about. happened. Acid reflux disappeared. The energy levels like went up. happened first. Yeah. Before the the the, gratis, uh, the satisfactory weight losses, would you say those internal? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Now, how long into you think you, just without weight loss, without anything like that? How long do you, into it do you think you started feeling better? Not not the, the not the soreness, not like that stuff, but like. Oh actually, yeah, like, the soreness sucked, yeah, but uh, just inner energy levels went up almost immediately. Yeah, that was kind of an instant a week. kind of gig. Yeah, within a week. Yeah. Oh man, I just feel a little better today. That, and that's the the dynorphin, the, the heat stress, the hyperthermia, oh, yeah. or hyperthermic um, conditioning. That, that's Tony. Because you were doing the sauna. I, I mean, there's yeah, well, yeah, and, and uh, I started I out, and I could only do ten minutes in the sauna before it was too miserable, and I had to get out. And you know, he just kept Anthony just kept saying, "Look, man, just add one more minute." Yeah. 
you know, suffer it from one more and then one more and then one more. Now I'm up to 30, 35 minutes depending on the previous workout. Because yeah. if it was a high intensity workout, the body's already a little hot. Oh yeah. So when you get in the sauna, it's like, damn, I'm only going to make it 30 minutes. Exactly. Because yeah. when I start getting lightheaded, it's time to get out. <laughs> yeah, don't time pass to get <laughs> <Time laughs> some water. Yeah, time rehydrate. to get out. Refuel. Yeah. You know, and then little things like breathe through the nose while you're in there. You know, just you, these are that? things you wouldn't mm -hmm. know if you didn't have somebody telling you. You know, we just talked about it today. I'm 11 months in, and I've been bench pressing wrong. You just lay on your back and you push straight up, right? You think that's that think. simple? No, you got to squeeze your shoulders back, uh, and so you yes. keep your shoulder out of it. And I'm like, ah, oh, crap. I mean, it's the simplest of moves. Yeah, it's just a push. Just but push. you know, those people who think they know more come in and try. Oh, I can do it on my own. Well, no, you can't. Because look at you. If you could do it on your own, you would have. <laughs> That's very true. But you get that in any business. I mean, we were talking about it. Yeah. And when you look at business across the board, we were talking about it downstairs. There's universal things that are, like, just across the board. Like, know-it-alls exist in every business. Oh, yeah. I'm going to sell my house, and I know how to do it better than the person who is licensed and been doing this for however many years. I'm going to fix my car, because I, I can fix it better than the mechanic who's, you know, been doing it for how many years. Everything that we do, that we, we're better at it than the person that we could literally hire to do this because they make money doing this. Right. And they make a living. And they have the education. So I think I might have had a leg up there because I've been a, a real estate professional for, you know, more than two decades. And so I have that conversation with people. You know, yeah, you could probably sell it for sale by owner, but you'll probably take a bloodbath. Whereas you hire somebody who's going to give you more exposure, you'll have more buyers, you'll probably net more money. Even though you're paying a commission, you'll walk away with more. But you'll have less stress. Everything will be handled right the first time. So coming into the fitness, it's like, okay, well, let's take that same mentality and not... I'm the for sale by owner of fitness. You know, could I come in here and do shit on my own? Absolutely. But am I going to get the same results? Absolutely not. No way. And plus, it's easier for goal number one to happen when you have an appointment set. I got to go meet somebody at 11 o'clock. It's a little harder to, to, to text somebody and say, I'm not going to make it. Mm -hmm. It's not a lot harder because, you know, that's an easy text to send in yeah. fitness. Yes. But it's still any little edge you can give yourself. Take that edge. And it was like, nah, I have an appointment set every day at 11 o'clock. Goal number one, just show up. Anthony, get in the building. Daisy had to hunt him down. Uh, hunt him no, down, not but. for, not because he wasn't here. Work-related things oh, came up. Those are different. It was never one of those things where, where's Jay, well, actually, his his punctuality is questionable sometimes. But aside from realtors that, are never on time. Yeah, hey, come on. Those are probably the days where you're like, I don't want to fucking do this. Yeah. No, I get busy. I get clients <laughs> in the morning, and then I show okay. up five minutes late, because ten minutes late. We've been in the building. And I've had to find him in the building because he's been on the phone with somebody or something else. Yeah. Other than that, it's not like... Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I'm still here. Yeah. I'm still here. But you're still <laughs> showing up. I'm in the building. <laughs> yeah, and he's gotten much better about that because it's it's literally like, I'm here, I'm on my way, whatever it is. Because in the beginning it was like, dude, you're like you're half hour late. I know. <laughs> Damn it. I know. Life happened. Yeah. So in the journey, there was probably multiple points where you're like, just, I want to stop. No, that's every day. Every day. No, I, I'm not going to pretend like I'm this, you know, super motivated individual because that's not the truth. The truth is, is I can't remember a day I wanted to come to the gym at all. I, I Actually, I don't think I've ever had one except for day one. Day one, I wanted to come to the gym. After that, no. Oh, shit. This is what it's like? Yeah. Yeah, it's it's a big commitment, but it's like, you know, goal number one, goal number two, keep it simple. At the beginning, um, because you were so used to a schedule and a routine and, and working or whatever the, the schedule was, putting this hour into your day and, and these little, like, ten minutes here of focusing on nutrition and meal planning and whatever it is, was it a big deal um, to do that? Or, again, was it suck it up buttercup? It was suck it up buttercup. Because, you know, nobody wants to not eat pizza anymore. Nobody wants to not go have that bacon triple Whataburger with cheese and jalapenos and bacon. You know, just hearing the description makes you go, oh, damn, that sounds good. Yeah, yeah. But nobody wants to not eat that stuff yeah. anymore. Yeah. <laughs> 
but you know, it's what do you want more is the question. Do you want to be healthy and do you want to look a certain way more, or do you want to eat that burger more? You know, it's it's just a simple string of decisions and making the right one. When we just when we started, how far away were you living from the gym? God, I was forty five minutes away. Whoa. So it was a 45 minute drive every single morning to get here. It wasn't an hour out of your day. It was two and a half hours. Two and a half hours out of the day, yeah. yeah in, including the time in the gym. So, you know, you're working out for an hour and then you got 30 minutes in the sauna. And then we oh, yeah. added 20, 20 more minutes that. for getting out in the sun, get that vitamin D going. You can't tell if he's been in the sun almost every day. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm Scotch, so <laughs> I'm a Scotsman. And we burn, we don't tan. <laughs> and I'm like, when I first started telling me, yeah, so he's like, I'm getting out there. I'm like, no, no, no. He's like, you need Dude, to be. Come on. <laughs> like, I can tell you're not out there. I'm out there. All, uh, okay. I'm out there. Take look at me. Yes. I'm out there. <laughs> he's, Physically, he's, with your eyes, look. Yeah. I'm laying out there. What yeah. do you want me to do? <laughs> he's, he's a few shades darker, but, you know, unfortunately. <laughs> the, the easiest tell is not there. Yeah. I'm a white boy. It is what it is. <laughs> but that's and that's huge because you, you think about I'm not motivated. I don't want to be here. I'm sore all the time. So, I mean, and in in the past, just because I'm curious, how many days have you not been sore since we started? Yeah, I can't remember the last time something wasn't sore. Definitely. So I can't. Yeah. Eighty, ninety percent of the time. Yeah. Something's. I worked. hurt. I'm an hour away from the gym. I'm not motivated to do this. So and then I have to spend two hours at the gym mm -hmm. that they're making me. So yeah, plus shower time. All of these yeah. things that would, but yet show up to the best I can. You just up, you just know. hone in on two goals. That's it, and the rest handles itself. I figured all the results will handle themselves if I can just do one and two. I don't need to worry about how many pounds I'm going to lose or how much muscle I'm going to gain. I don't need to worry about that. I just need to worry about showing up and doing the best I can. So if I can just keep it there, then it's easy to keep it going, so to speak. And out of this uh, torture, what did you enjoy the most? I, I, there's nothing. You know, there's nothing I enjoyed the most. <laughs> I, the change. I enjoy the, the, the dipping results. in the pool after the after the sauna. <laughs> <laughs> the moment where you know it's absolutely oh, over. Like, it oh, yes, I'm out of the sauna and dipping into the pool. It's a little moment that of last heaven. Mile right yes. there. <laughs> that is and awesome. other than that, it's there, there's nothing. It, it, there's no nothing that's fun because every workout's different. So there's there's never been two workouts ever the same. So I don't think there's ever been a movement. Oh, I like that one. <laughs> like it. We're not doing it ever again. Yeah, well, I'm glad you enjoyed it because that's the last time you'll ever see it. Okay, <laughs> great. So, what things do you like the least? Because we're doing those. All of it. And, yeah. And then you start finding yourself liking the the ones that are like just as hard. Like shit. <laughs> I don't. I don't want to like this. So, um, one thing that you had mentioned, I want to say a couple months ago, and it's kind of kept going. But talk about how this actually. So you're, you're in real estate. How has this impacted kind of? your business because you're here three hours a day you know you're, you're spending the money to be here but what has it done for work oh yeah big time there um there's been multiple studies done that more attractive people make more money and it's absolutely true i'm sorry it just is um you pull up to a home and you're a 300 pound fat ass you are perceived differently than you show up looking like i do at 230 now there's just a different perception, and you can see it. It's obvious. It, people don't hide it well. You know, my wife has also lost 120 pounds, 129 pounds. She is perceived drastically differently than she was when she was 280. And so, yes, our income has gone up dramatically. Yeah. And that's, I think I want to use that video because at the end where you saw Gina and Jason standing together with the, the lightsaber battle, that's like if you see them now compared to where they were then, <laughs> yeah. it's like it's two different people. Like, yeah, it's not even Absolutely. like my jaw hit the floor because I've been here the whole time and you've been there and you see you don't see the results in the beginning. I told you that at the beginning. You're not going to see yeah. it. We're going to see it. But after a certain point, you don't realize how far you've come until you see. Because you, you see it every day. You see yeah. us nearly every day, so it's it's gradual. Yeah. You don't see it all. But then when you go back and look at a picture from 11 months ago, you're like, no way. Mm -hmm. No way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and 
Do you consider 11 months a short time when you look back at it, or is that... Oh, it seems like an eternity. I'm not going to sugarcoat anything. None of this was easy. But, you know, I, I kept it easy in my mind because, again, I'm just honed in on two things. That's all. Two things. And you can see that a lot, too, because we've talked about it. Every, every workout, it's always something where there's, there's a change in a benchmark, and it's never been, I'm not lean enough. It's... I want to maybe do three more reps of this, or I want to do this. Like, I want to do pull-ups. I, want I just to want to do pull-ups. a little bit better than I did last time. Yeah, and we hammered out. We were doing bench the other day, and it was kind of like, it's going up easy for what it is. And then I told him, uh, oh, whatever that was, because <laughs> we got up to 235 on the bench for three. And so like, well, I want to get to a point where I can, you know, rep it out again. He's like, that's not my number, but that's where I want to be. And then he looked back at it, and it was like, but a year ago I couldn't have done this if I tried. Oh, yeah, I was having yeah. trouble just lifting, you know, the bar with, Tens on it, yeah. Because yeah. I've always been, you know, I was I, I was a little weak in the chest, you know. That's one of my I got two little problem areas that pissed me off. It's the chest and pull ups. Mm-hmm. Okay. Because I've never been able to conquer pull ups my entire life. Even the best shape of my life, I could have only ever do <coughs> two pull ups. Okay. And it's like, no, I want to get those, man. I want to yeah. own those. So it's you know, seeing these uh, benchmarks going up is like, wow, what a win that is. Couldn't even do, you know, two dips, and now we're freaking dipping like it's nothing. And it's like, dang, look at that, dude. (laughs) Yeah, that was big. Like, in order to do dips, we had to use either the whole stack, or we had to, like, jump up there and lower ourselves down. I think today's not a good example, but last week we did sets 12 without a problem. Just hanging, feet weren't touching. Just yeah, just banging them out like they were nothing. Yeah, it's like, dang, I couldn't have done that in the beginning. <laughs> waited. We did them waited last yeah. week. Yeah, Tied wow. weights to me, exactly. Mm-hmm. So it's, I mean, it's, it's things like that, <clears throat> the focus versus the big picture. Because if you look at, if you, you know, what is it, heady an elephant one bite at a time? Yeah. I think most people come in here and try and swallow their elephant, yeah. not necessarily, you know, chew it. Again, Enjoying the little wins along the way. Like, man, I just did, a you know, five pull-ups. I've never done five pull-ups. <laughs> and it doesn't sound like much, but... Yeah, but they're those, wins. Those are big wins, yeah. Massive. Progress. So what do you what do you plan on doing to celebrate your, sure, your one year? Well, so we cross October 1. We're going to call that our one-year mark. What are you going to do? Yeah, it's what no trainer wants to hear, but I'm going to dive into the, the biggest pizza I can find. Like and biggest I'm, in size? Oh, yeah, I'm going to go for it, man. I think, think we're going to go to Doe's. I heard Doe's is the best pizza in town, so oh, I'm going to yeah, go out to Doe's. Oh, yeah, best pizza? Yeah, I don't, I'm not too sure. I, I might eat two of them in one city. Oh, and Tony says there's probably a better place on Florio's. Oh, I like oh, Florio's. Florio's, Florio's is, is delightful, yeah. I've heard of that. You told me I need to go there, too. Dude, they're amazing. It's the closest thing to the New York atmosphere and, and pizza that I've had since I've lived in Texas. Boom. It really is. I mean, Eddie told you the story. They walked in, and they're like, what do you want? You're taking too long. Come so on, I man. know how this is going to go. I'm going to feel like total crap afterwards because <laughs> yes. I'm drinking beer with it, too. Oh, yeah. And I'm going to just go for it, man. Just Absolutely. just totally ha- I'm going to cheat all the way. Feel like crap for the rest of the day, and then come back into the gym and work it off. <laughs> Take it all out again. Yep. Yeah, you're gonna feel like garbage. I don't think you'll make it in that Tuesday. Not because you won't want to, but because I think things will be moving in a uh, in a in a bad way. In a bad way. Yeah. Because yeah. because she, you know, I can't have dairy and I can't have wheat, so I'm gonna yeah. Th- those both came up on the oh, yeah. food sensitivity. It's like, well, I'm gonna do it down. anyway. I'm gonna do it anyway. You haven't had that. And then brewers months. yeast yeah. also, so I'm gonna be bad on the beer side too. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. oh, but after a year, I've earned it. Damn it. That's true. Exactly so, and yeah. know, let's let's hope that the body reacts differently to to it now. Yeah. Oh, I'm sure I'll feel like crap the rest <laughs> of the day. Feel amazing. But for that, you know, it's for that cool. little hour yeah. there, we're going to celebrate. <laughs> what has up 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 throughout this? What have you used as your reward food throughout, or rewards for yourself? I should say. I haven't had any. I, I, that that thought about. process never really entered my mind. To well, be I was, honest, I was thinking about the mountain of sushi. Oh, well, no, that's only because I was told to go eat sushi. That. So that was more of a, uh, yay, I get to have sushi, all right. <laughs> yeah, because that was one of the things he was like, <laughs> sushi, and we started talking about that after uh, we saw the one guy who jumped up, because he was going through some serious dehydration the first summer hit, uh, first part of the summer. Chlorella. Hit. Yeah. yeah. Well, the chlorella didn't help much either, because it was causing him to, because he was so inflamed, he was causing wasting his... a lot of inflammation. Mm. <laughs> we'll call it that. Gee, yeah. Yeah, we'll be nice and say that's what it did. That's, that's what it did. <laughs> but uh, we sent him out to eat sushi. Obviously started holding water after that, which was better. 
Yeah. And then once it stops yeah. having the uh, the rampaging effect on a system, it's a lot better. On the plus side, I've only seen two people have that kind of reaction. Tense there. Yeah. Oh, it definitely, it yeah. definitely cleaned you out, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah. It was a very interesting week. It looks like, you know, severe, nice severe dehydration. Because it was just going in one end and out the other. It's like, oh my God. This green stuff is uh, worse than the Hulk. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it's, it's got the rage of the Hulk. You won't yeah. like me when I'm angry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and is always angry. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what, uh, what would be the one thing? So if you were to sum up everything that we talked about today, and you're going to tell this to, to, to yourself or someone like you starting out, what would you say? Uh, I would say, contrary to popular belief, it's not best to focus on the big picture. It's better to boil it down to something small. I mean, the whole theme, I'm sure, of this entire conversation has been I focused on two little things, and that was it. And if I could conquer those, then everything else would handle itself. So I think make it easier mentally just by focusing on two little things you know, whatever those two things are for you, focus on that. Don't look at the big picture because it's too intimidating. You know, we're not all on a television show called The Biggest Loser and there's a million dollar prize at the end. It, it, there's no prize at the end except for your health. So it's, well, two things. That's it. Because yeah. motivation's not going to be there and it's not going to be there. Nobody's going to inspire you. Your trainers are not going to all of a sudden motivate the hell out of you. It's not going to happen. You know, one of the things that I recommend to anybody is is to uh, read a book called the uh, the five second rule by Mel Robbins. It is a life changing book. It gets you to focus on smaller stuff. And her technique is five, four, three, two, one, go. Ah. Uh, okay. So your brain, any time that you know, to sum that up is is your brain usually takes about five seconds to talk yourself out of making a good decision because your brain is wired for self preservation. So it's you don't want to do things that are painful or things that are outside of your your comfort zone. So you have to disrupt that thought process. You make a decision and then you go five, four, three, two, one. You can't actually engage the part of your brain that comes up with the excuses if you count down. You're distracting yourself. Yeah, you, you're just engaging a different part of your brain. So, I mean, it sounds simple, yeah. but, you know, it really works. And uh, that's an audio book, and I tell everybody and their mama, listen to that damn book. I'm about to get it. <laughs> listen yeah. to it. It is a life-changing a book. <laughs> it is life-changing. And, and uh, she goes into intimate detail. Any excuse you ever have, if you just five, four, three, two, one, you can conquer that excuse. It was just amazing. So for me, it was I took the, the theme of that book and boiled it down. Instead of five, four, three, two, one, I boiled it down to two things. You know, it's the same way I treat business. You know, if my customer service is epic, then I don't need to worry about my paycheck. That's It'll it, handle yeah. itself. Yeah, Mel Robbins, she's amazing. You'll thank me for that one. <laughs> Sounds like it already. I already like it. We'll put a picture up on the. Book. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know, you need to listen to that book. It'll be the best thing you ever did. Yeah. Vitamins for your mind and your body. Yeah. What do you? What would you say? What would be your one thing if you? As you summarize this whole thing, what do you think? What did you take? Oh, my takeaway is exactly what you just said. Uh, do the best you can, or show up and just do the best you can. Um, just keep it simple, because those are the. And the reason I love it so much is those are the two things you can really control. Is yeah, um, did I have cake and ice cream when I know I shouldn't have? That falls under rule number two. That wasn't the best you could do. Mm -hmm. you, know, you could have talked yourself out of, out of it by saying suck it up and just go to sleep, right? Yeah. These things, if you follow these two rules and you truly stick to them, or these two goals, man, yeah, the results take care of themselves. I love that. You're I, on I, autopilot. I, I, uh, something I, I was surprised <laughs> with you know, was the, the motivational part, how you said, no, that just doesn't exist. Don't expect to find motivation from, you can try to get these short sparks in like YouTube inspirational videos and stuff, but that's just... BS. It's short lived. Yeah. yeah, and uh, I think people. It's not going to be there for the long term. They're looking for that spark every day to like, yeah, I should go to the gym. And well, and too many people are looking for exterior uh, 
exterior stimuli and they'll blame exterior stuff you know when really it's the guy in the mirror you need to look at well this trainer's not good or you know that gym or that class or you know whatever this that the, the other season. my my yeah. children this my spouse that I don't have time blah 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 those are all called excuses and those are answers to the wrong questions now what do I mean by that you know we ask ourselves the wrong questions our, our internal conversations are usually jacked why can't I lose weight well that's the wrong question because then your brain's going to answer that. Well, you can't lose weight because you always take the elevator. You got to park as close as you can to the building. You know, you never take the stairs. You, you you can't seem to pass up a cheeseburger. You don't get your butt in the gym. That's why you can't lose weight. And and all those things lead to depression because you know your brain's just going to focus on failure all the time. Well, what if you just rearrange the question? What do I need to do right now to lose some weight? Well, now your brain's going to answer that question. Well, you know what? Let's park at the back of the parking lot so i got to walk to the building. You know what? Let's skip the elevator and take the stairs. Instead of that burger, you know what? Let me get some lean chicken and some vegetables. Let me drink water instead of soda. You know, your brain's going to answer that. So you know what? Let's go to the gym. I, don't, I know I don't want to, but let's do it anyway. Let's show up. Yeah, yeah. Let's, let's just show up. And you know now your brain is working on that, and if you're focused on positive answers, then you're just going to get positive results. So you know it's, it's those little things. Yeah, internal conversations. My internal conversations are hilarious. You know, I'll get up in the morning, and I don't feel like I'm tired. I had I worked my ass off yesterday. I had 50 clients. I just want to take the day off and relax. I want to turn my brain off. Let's go to a movie. You know, nah, not today. And then I'll get in front of the mirror and go, screw that. That ain't going to get you anywhere. <clears throat> goal number one is what? Show up. Okay, well then let's go execute goal number one. Because once I've executed goal number one, then the natural progression is to execute goal number two. Okay, well I'm already here. I might as well get something done. You know, many times when they wear my ass out, you know, I keep thinking to myself, I'm already in pain. I might as well get something out of it. So we'll do one more set. <laughs> <laughs> Just keep pushing through. We're already jacked. We might as well get something out of it. So, man, it wasn't that bad. Yeah. And, and then at the it. end, you're sitting in the sauna. I just want to die. <laughs> Take it out. <laughs> and then they got me into doing uh, the uh, massages, deep tissue massages, and you go see the massage therapist, and you know you think you're gonna in for a relaxing. No. Yeah. No. You're in for a mountain of pain for about you know an hour to ninety minutes, and. Then you'll feel good afterwards, but not not during. Not no. during. No. no. All downhill. Ah. Oh, so these muscles are sore? Let me just poke them and prod them and squeeze them. Ah! ah! <laughs> 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 but you learn about recovery. <laughs> you learn what things you should be doing. Yeah. Right. So we say foam roll. Maybe if we foam roll, someone wouldn't hurt as bad in their massages. Yeah, and I haven't been perfect. Yeah. <laughs> I have not been perfect. I haven't done everything I've been told. I'd say I'm a 90 percenter. Yeah. But, you know, I run out of time. Like any human being, I, I have other responsibilities, so maybe I didn't get time to foam roll. And, you know, then when I go see my massage therapist, it's like, well, you're going to pay for that. Mm -hmm. like there are consequences to not yeah. doing what you're told. Yeah. <laughs> a reaction, there's a little bit of <laughs> I can skip the phone rolling, but what will happen tomorrow? Yeah. How will I feel? You will How die. Will you will walk Saturday? funny. You will drop your keys and go, I'm sorry I lost those forever. <laughs> <laughs> I don't really need those. Are you one of those little uh, extendo clip things? <laughs> yeah. You reach down, pick yeah. up. Yeah. Ask your wife, can you get those for me? <laughs> I can't bend over either. Just bend over and pick them up. No, no, yeah, can't do it. like, I'm just a sore. <laughs> Nice, dude. This was this was awesome. awesome. I can't wait to. Uh, I'm gonna tell my clients to just be look on the lookout for when we put this out because this is great. great well, it was great hilarious stuff. when I met with Lauren the first time and I told her what those two goals were because she was my initial interview at Lifetime. She just looked at me funny. She's like, "Well, but how many pounds do you want to lose?" I'm like, "No, no, no. I, I I don't care about that." Well, wait a minute. Don't you have a fitness goal? No. Show up. Do the best I can. I don't want to think about anything else. <laughs> <laughs> well, what do you want to look like at the end? 
whatever my body will allow. Whatever it ends Just, up looking like. Right now, I can only focus on two things or I'm not going to make it. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's what he's done. And then she sat back in her chair and thought about it and was like, that's the most brilliant thing I've ever heard. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it absolutely is. I've never heard a client say that before. That's that's brilliant. I said yes, yes, just two things. And it completely avoids failure because you can't fail if your goal is to show up. Did you show up? Check that you. one's a yes or no. Yeah. And you know, go to your calendar saying, and write on your calendar either I burned fat or I got fat. Put that on. You know, what day mm-hmm. is it? Did I show up? Yes or no? I got fat. Damn it. Yeah. Yep. Well, luckily for me, I didn't have those days because I showed up. Yeah. And the only days that we missed were on set or... Uh, yeah, when life happened. Yeah. yeah. Business or, you know, yeah. something else was going on that I just couldn't be here. Set, but yeah. then I made it up. Say, well, you know, I'll come in on Sunday. Just tell me what you want me to do. And, and then they would text times. me, you know, here's what you need to do. And I noticed those workouts are harder than when I'm with them. And I think that's a small punishment. Sometimes. Even though they don't want to admit it. A lot of times it's auxiliary work, so there's more movements because we don't do we don't do more arms, volume. we don't do the sh- well shoulders directly a lot. So we're not doing biceps or triceps, but so we would get a lot of those movements. Uh, so we'd have a lot of auxiliary movements. Oh, and then they were primarily but one set abs. of twenty five snatches, and we're doing five sets. Really? What the hell's wrong with you? Tony's sometimes <laughs> Tony's a little insane too. But and that's remember, in between pushing we, the sled. It's like you're an evil bastard. You gotta keep pushing the envelope. Yeah. Envelope. Yeah. Ah, really you're trying to kill me is what you're trying to do. Mm-hmm. And then I go home. The wife's like, "How's your workout?" I'm convinced they're trying to kill me. Mm-hmm. They want to see how far they can go before I collapse. They torture. Yes. Okay. Let's and since I haven't time. collapsed yet, <laughs> <laughs> there's still further we can go. <laughs> see you tomorrow. We yeah. obviously haven't pushed you hard enough. <laughs> and when we see where that end is, we haven't found our end yet. <clears throat> so my caveat was, you know, have a goal number one and goal number two, and then goal number three. If I was really going to give anybody any advice, is don't think. Yeah. Don't think. It. Just do what you're told. Yeah, that was one thing. It never, it never came up. It was never. Oh, I saw this online, or I was reading this, or whatever else. It was just that so much. yeah, because it, 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 it's it's a hurdle. Mm-hmm. Well, I saw something that was that was, that was you know, or my friend injury. told me this, or this coworker is on yeah. this diet. You think? And I, I I tuned out the rest of the world and said I hired professionals that know what they're doing, that have track records, been doing it longer than me. I'm just going to trust they know what the hell they're doing, and just come in and just trust the process. Okay, well, I'm just going to do what I'm told. I don't have to think about it, so it takes that whole burden off. So then I can focus on number two. Okay, they want me to do this movement. Okay, I'll do the best I can on that movement. But I don't need to worry about what are we doing next. What are, what are, what body part are we working on today? I don't need to think about any of that stuff. I just show up, well, we're going to have fun today. Which, by the way, anybody listening, that translates into they're going to have fun today. You're not. I never was qualified who was going to have fun. Yeah. yeah, just fun was going to be fun had. Be yeah. Done. yeah. <laughs> there will be fun. It's not going to be fun for you. Yeah. It's going to be fun for them to watch. Yeah, that is true. But, you know, we're doing legs today. Oh, okay. We're? we're yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's kind of like we're having fun. <laughs> My, we're doing I only legs. have one rule we're now, though. Fun. If you're going to make me do burpees, you have to do them with me. <laughs> My clients, uh, some of them call me out if I say the we, so I've gotten better at not doing that. I say, you're doing, because yeah. uh, I'll say, okay, we have deadlifts. Like, oh, okay, you go first. I'm like, oh, okay, mm-hmm. you have deadlifts. <laughs> you. <laughs> yeah, that doesn't work. You're going to do them for me? No. Nope. We're going to flip tires. Oh, okay. Actually, yeah, you know what? Do mine for me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, you got to do my set for me. Oh, yeah. yeah. So we've done some interesting things with hammers and tires and, oh, goodness gracious. Bungee cords. Outdoor workouts. Mm-hmm. We just need to take every bungee cord in this building and just set them on fire. We got it. We should. We, just, we still have to get together for our mace workouts, mm-hmm. but maybe we can just do that outside one day. All of us. Just, Jason. Yeah. Might bring as well. Jason, bring Terrence. Highland Games. Yeah. yeah. That is That is actually his goal. Like, at this point... Like, we didn't have an actual goal, okay. but now we're going to do the Highland Games in uh, April. Okay, and talk to me, what are the Highland Games? So it's, uh, well... Uh, every year the Helotus has the Highland Games, so it's it's Scottish Games where, you know, you're basically throwing stuff like logs and oh, shit, that's heavy, uh, heavy objects over your head. 
So I thought it would be a lot of fun just to, you know what, man, let's put a team together and go out there and compete in the Highland Games. We'll buy a bunch of kilts and you know, just have a good time with it. The uh, I actually found out the history, because Jason asked me to look into kind of training for it and everything else. I found out the history of why they were similar to... Um, Definitely need different, to do the Mason. Oh, yeah. Oh, man, it was sling that stuff. Different like uh, martial arts and things have similar histories. Um, during the English invasion of Scotland, or the uh, occupation of Scotland, they weren't allowed to train. They weren't allowed to do things that were considered... Um, Warlike that would help like them to overthrow. Gotcha. So when you think about it, they would throw stones because in battle you can throw stones. You can throw things at your enemies. Um, they would throw hammers because you could throw a hammer in battle, pick it up, and throw it again. It's not going to break. Um, so a lot of it was based around war tactics. Um, there's uh, I can't remember the name of it. Basically, it's like a uh, pork uh, pitchfork that you're throwing a bale of hay to, as high as you can. And what that was, that was a sign of like manliness, because only the strongest men could work the longest days. Because as you as you're as you're stacking hay, it gets to a certain height where the lesser people will not be able to get that bale as high. Um, and that's basically what it came down to. The is, higher up you can get it, the more you can stack. Less, yeah. Yep. So, so you're, this is, this would you like super, to see me crush him like a worm? <laughs> <laughs> that's super. Do you know what type of events? So you said logs. So there's a, there's a caber toss. So okay. it's basically you pick up a, I think it's an eight foot telephone pole, more or less, and see how far you can throw it. Um, there's, it's, I forget the name of it, but it's a shot put, where it's a, basically it's a stone throw, but you don't use a shot put, you use an actual stone. Okay. Um, and it's rated from 16 to 20 pounds, because they're stones, so they're not exactly even. So you throw it like a shot put, and yep. you spin in it. And or you store it however you want, but with then there's the hammer spin. throw. Mm -hmm. yeah. Hammer throw. Hammer is how heavy? The hammer is, I believe, it's thirty-two pounds. So oh, it's it's heavier than a regular sledgehammer. We're gonna have to do some training to yeah. get ready for that. <laughs> yeah, and then the the bale at the hay bale is twenty pounds, but you use like a burlap sack and something else to yeah. throw it over there. But that's. Yeah. It'll be fun. You're, I see you lifting tires and putting them on steps in, your, in the future. <laughs> yeah. If you haven't done that already. Oh, no, yeah, we've already done, done yeah, that. Yeah, lift the tire and carry it on the gym. You want yeah, to that? I, well, that's probably why I'm thinking, because I know you did it with somebody. Yeah. It was me. <laughs> it was him. <laughs> I'm the guinea pig for all that stuff. You're 11 months in, you just... Let's try something. Oh. <laughs> I think we could do this. No, 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 no. Yeah. Oh, you said I think. that We can't do it. <laughs> and then as you do one... You see something, you're like, oh, let's add this. Let's test this out. What? No, I don't want to test. I'm not here for testing. I skip the testing. Dang. Dude, that's fun. I like the Highlands games. That's going to be cool. That would be so, fun. Yeah. So we got to get a team together so you may be recruited. I might be recruited. Hey, I definitely would train for that. Yeah. I got the maces in the clubs. So it's just kind of neat. You know, you put a year in to transform your body, and then it's like, okay, what do you do after that year? Mm -hmm. It's like, okay, well, now let's train for something fun and and then there's goals that are actually yeah. well it's, you know now after a year it's like now I can think about well what do I really want to look like so yeah. you know now I want to get a six pack well no my entire life I've never had one so it's like okay well let's go get it nice because now I think I can do it so you kind of evolve past the goal number one and goal number two and say well let me let you know a little yeah. fitness goal get in there exactly <laughs> Exactly. And that was even one thing we talked about. The body fat's the lowest it's ever been, despite his conditioning. I mean, I remember the first day that we broke, I think it was broken our 250, it was like, I can't remember the last time I was on our 250. And then we got on our 240, it's like, oh, I can't remember the last time I was on our 240. And it's like, wow. Yeah, you know? now I'm 230, I'm like, wait a minute, I weighed 230 pounds in high school. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm wearing the same pant size I wore when I was a senior. So you have this much muscle as well? In high school? Uh, I was probably a little more muscular then than I am now, but, you know, I'm 44 years old, so, so it'll take a little so while to get but, on there. But, I mean, yeah. on, let's be honest, a month away and you're going to look. I'll probably be there, yeah. If, if it's even going to take a month. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Because now it's starting to come on, you know, you look in the mirror and you're like, whoa, where'd those veins come from? <laughs> look at those arms, jeez. I mean, and, and we talk about training age, right, from a training perspective. I mean, he's only a year old. Yeah. In the sense of the training age and stuff, like so. Yeah, but at forty-four years old, getting these kind of results is pretty amazing. Yeah, it's great. 
Where I'm not taking any weird pills or yeah. you know, yeah. shots or you know any extracurricular steroids or anything yeah. like that because I can't get past the needle. So I told them that on day one. Yeah. Well, you don't have to worry about me taking steroids. I can't get past the needle. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I had a hard enough time getting the food sensitivity test done, <laughs> which I need to update, and I still haven't done it because of the damn needle. Because I, you know, I know they're gonna suck blood out of me. Yikes. Yeah, I'm right there with you though. Yeah, but you know, when it was when it was time for him to do it at the six month mark, he still has the same test. <laughs> you have to re you're gonna have to unexpire it <laughs> in the system. <laughs> I gotta go get that done. Yes. Everyone heard that, he's gonna go get that done. Oh yeah. So, so if I it's do, not done by, by two weeks. Yes, yeah, so by the time this is uploaded he'll have his results. And we'll go ahead and we'll just we'll just show you the foods that are on his new results when he gets there. Hopefully some stuff has come back that I can have because I miss things. Yeah. The biggest thing I miss is cheese. Okay. I really miss cheese. <laughs> I'm sure that'll be okay. And then damn it, mushrooms. Yeah, he's so upset about mushrooms. Interesting. But by I now, like mushrooms, damn it. You should probably have them back if you had done the test four months I ago. Know. I'm, uh, I'm probably only cheating myself at this point. At this point, yeah, that's true. i got to go find out what I can reintroduce. Start eating again. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe eggs. It would be nice to have eggs back. That would be nice. It would be awesome. It's such, there's just such a, it's just, it's a it's stable, food. it's a, it's an easy thing. It's super easy. Yeah. I mean, that, when that food sensitivity test came back, it was a heartbreaker. It's like, okay, let's make a list of all the things that you like the most, and you can't have any of them. Oh, great. No eggs, no dairy, no wheat, no brewer's yeast, no baker's yeast. So there goes all your breads, pastas, gone. Right, so what am I left with? No eggs, I can't have my breakfast tacos anymore. No wheat, so I can't have tortillas. Yeah. No pizza, because that's got cheese and wheat in it. Like, Jesus, I can't even have whey protein. Yeah. So I had to do either vegan or the beef protein, or I guess they call them po collagen peptides now. It's yeah. the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard, but whatever. <laughs> <clears throat> People are just silly. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so what am I left with? Meat and vegetables. That's it. Meat, vegetables, and water. <laughs> and in the beginning, no caffeine. So the no, you know, that was the first thing he told me. Well, you can't drink coffee for a while, and no more tea. And I'm like, what? No whoa, coffee? Yeah, whoa, yeah. So no breakfast foods, no coffee. Y'all just want me to die. That's what you want. This is what happens. But you did it. Yeah. Well, it's just like, all right, if it came up on the list, I'm just not going to have it. It's just, you know, Period. It's just cut it all out. Coffee on your list, or... Why we it, well, in the beginning, you didn't want me to have the caffeine. Yes, because I wanted that to be more of a metabolic boost. But I can remember that was on the list. And then you added caffeine later. You said, "Okay, you can have coffee now." Yeah. Is that to boost? But by then, I had already been so used to not having Bye. coffee yeah. anymore. <laughs> Damn right. I just don't. You know, now that I can have it, I don't. I don't drink it. <laughs> yeah. Because the purpose was for energy. Yeah, and so yeah, body body's producing its own energy now, so I don't need the caffeine boost to get me going. Yeah, so that was a big change. So that that reduced all that acid going in. I'm a lot less acidic now. I got all excited about a new source of alkaline water. I mean, this is what I'm boiled down to now. That was news. Oh, I found a great place to buy alkaline water. Yeah. What has happened to me? What has happened? <laughs> My joy has switched to alkaline water. But so, yeah. A year ago, you would be like... It's not the new water? coffee yeah. joint. It's the new water place I found. Like, gee, where did that come from? So it takes... Well, hopefully that's helpful. Hopefully somebody will get something out of that. I think yeah, so. That's very helpful. I think that shed a lot of light on. It's definitely very helpful for at least me. If, yeah. if, it, if it just helps at least me, it's... Yeah. Well, I, think it's I have a few clients that. in my mind that when they listen to this, they're going to... Mm -hmm. Well, it's the little nuggets that apply to all aspects of life. You yeah, know, and that's why... Business I, as well. You know, if I want to have a thriving business, just pick two of the most important things that you can control and focus on those. Yeah. So for me, it's company culture and customer service. If I can just be really good at those two things, I don't need to worry about sales. I don't need to worry about marketing. I don't worry about any, anything business-related if my customer service is epic and my company culture is epic. So it's just two things. Just be good at two things. 
Or as I like to put it in, in, in business vernacular, you know, don't try to run McDonald's, just be really good at French fries. That's yeah. great. That's it. That's just be really good at French fries. That is gold. <laughs> that is. I mean, that's the easiest thing. Yeah. Golden uh, French fries. Exactly. French fries. Just yeah. make really good French fries and your McDonald's will do fine. <laughs> see the comments on this. Somebody's like, all you guys do is talk about food. Now I'm so hungry. So I can have french fries? I have, I have french fries. So what I, I got burgers. out of that whole thing was Damn french it. fries. Yeah. Hey, it remembers the first and last thing. <laughs> Go back and listen to the first thing. Yeah. <laughs> so we'll end on goal number one and goal number two. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Jason, thank you so much. Yeah. This Absolutely. Was, this, was, this, was, this was awesome. Great. Yeah. I, I want to do more of these. I think this is great. I'd like to have Gina on. Oh, God, yeah. Oh, yeah. She's got an epic story. That'd she really awesome. does. I mean, talk about a woman who's gone through ridiculous stuff. I mean, just bad luck. If she didn't have bad luck, she wouldn't have any at all. <laughs> she has a reason to come back in any house. Floods, fires, we'll accidents. Yeah. No self-esteem. 120 pounds. Yeah. She lost a person. Yeah. I think yeah. she's up to 130 at this point. Wow. And you guys will see that in the video. So there'll be like an overlap of the, of the <coughs> video. And you'll see Jason and Jean at the beginning and... You know, you'll see some after pictures, and then when we do Gina's, you'll see her, bef- uh, her before there and her afters as well. And this way you guys have kind of a idea as to where everything is. You know? Yeah, and you can hear what, how she stayed stuck with it, you know, because her, her technique and mine were different. Oh, I love that. Yeah. Uh, I think that's very different. Here, you know, people think they need to do it. She started same. three months before I did, and then it just kind of got in my head. Do I really want to be the fat guy with the hot chick? No. <laughs> no. He must make lots of money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like no, no, no. I don't want to yeah, be like that. Just I don't want to have a hot chick and me be all fat. That's just not going to work. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then I wanted to demonstrate for my realtors because I got fifty realtors that work for me. It's like okay, guys, let me show you how to set a goal and actually achieve it. And I'm going to pick something hard. I'm going to change my whole body. And I loved all the naysayers in the beginning. Oh, yeah, right, whatever. You won't stick to it. Nobody ever does. We'll see. I'm only focused on two things. Yeah, I'm keeping it simple. Yeah, Yeah. I can do two things. Two things I can do. Right above on that. Yeah. Well, and, and again, uh, the five-second rule. I'm, I'm I already, telling you right I already now. purchased it. It's good. my audible. Yeah. yeah so you will. Good. You'll thank me for that one. Yeah. You will. I, I, I made it mandatory for every realtor in my company. Really? To, yeah. Okay. There, there wasn't a choice. You listen to that book. You don't have a choice. Listen to it or go somewhere else. Or you don't work here. Yeah. Company culture. That's how important it was to me. <laughs> it, is, that, is that right up there with company culture or the customer service? Yeah. Or well, both. Business? Both. Both. Yeah. Because people will fight you hand, tooth, and nail to remain average. They will fight you to stay average. And it's like, you have got to overcome those stupid, silly, ridiculous excuses. Because when has an excuse ever served you? Or ever made your life better? That's why it's an excuse. Or sinking back into your comfort zone, how has that ever made you grow? It never did. Ever. So how do I overcome that? Five, four, three, two, one, go. Just go. That's hard. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Until next week. This is Anthony. This is Isaac. Be good. Go, go one and two. <laughs>